Hello urology postgrads and welcome to the electronic urology teaching course. My name is Mohammed Nouruddin and I'm one of the urologists in Basingstoke Hospital and I'm an assistant lecturer of urology in Ain Shams University in Egypt. Our first lecture in the course is about the management of renal trauma, which is a very crucial topic in the clinical life and also in the emergency scenario in the FRCS exam. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to identify the types and the classification of renal trauma. You will also be able to identify the indications of imaging in the cases of renal trauma. You will be able to discuss how to manage a stable and unstable patient after renal trauma. And also, you need to identify the short and long term complications of renal injury. We'll start by the epidemiology of the renal trauma. So, in general, renal trauma is more common in males and it accounts for 5% of the whole traumas. There's two major types of this injury, either a blunt or penetrating trauma. And most of the blunt injuries could be managed conservatively but in the cases of the penetrating injury, about more than 50% of them may need a surgical intervention. If the injury is anterior to the anterior axillary line, so this is more associated with medical injury, and this is will be more serious and will need more surgical in intervention probabilities but injuries behind the posterior axillary line will be more to the parenchyma and this will need more conservative management. One of the most important points that you need to know in the renal injury is the classification of it. And the American Association of the Surgery of Trauma has classified renal injury into five different categories. Grade 1 is the presence of contusion around the kidney or subcapsular hematoma. Grade 2 is the presence of a perinephric hematoma or laceration in the parenchyma, which is less than, than 1 cm, but it doesn't reach the pelvic cell system, which is a really important point. Grade 3 is the presence of a cortical laceration more than one centimeter, but also it doesn't reach the pelvic cell system. If the laceration has reached the pelvic cell system and caused urine extravasation, this is what we call a grade four injury. But also grade four injury include any segmental artery or vein injury or any associated renal artery thrombosis. And these are usually a common site of the MCQ's question. Grade 5 is the presence of shattered kidney or medical injury. For the management of renal trauma, the management of any trauma should be a multidisciplinary approach, including the coordination between the emergency doctor, the trauma team, and the general surgeons. And patients should be first resuscitated according to the ATLS criteria, including securing airway, wide venous access, crew and save, and examination of other part of the body to exclude any other injuries. Then more focused history about the mode of trauma would be very helpful to understand its impact on the body. Past the medical history as the presence of any renal disease or any previous operation will be very crucial in the management of this patient. Then focus examination will be to look at the abdomen, include any signs of fracture ribs, the entrance and the exit of the an injurious object in, in the case of the penetrating injuries. And then urine analysis is also a very important because microscopic material in some of these cases will be a very important indicator of the presence of associated urological organs. In order 
to complete the diagnosis, imaging is usually required. And the gold standard imaging technique that will be used in these cases will be the multi-phase abdominal CT, which is usually a part of the trauma protocol CTs. This multi-phase abdominal CT include a non-contrast phase. Then 10 seconds after injecting the contrast, there will be a shot which will be including the arterial phase. And then the nephrogenic phase around 70 seconds will show more enhancement to the parenchyma and this will be very important in identification the laceration to the cortical system. Then in the case of renal trauma, a delayed images should be taken and this will cause the will show the biographic or the urographic phase which will be very important in the identification of the laceration to the pelvic and cell system. There is other modalities of the renal imaging, but not most of them will be used in the case of the renal trauma. For example, the grayscale ultrasound, according to the American College of Radiology, has shown that it is not sensitive in the case of renal trauma, so it shouldn't be offered initially. Also, modalities like MRI it show a high sensitivity, but it's usually very logistically challenging in the cases of trauma. Radionucleotide scans will show a good function of the kidney and will discriminate between a bad function kidney and a good one function one. However, it would be very, very unpractical in the cases of the renal trauma. However, not every patient with suspected renal trauma should have a CT. That's why the European guidelines has put a certain indication to justify the criteria that patients should have a CT abnormal in the cases of the renal trauma. So first of all, any patient presenting after a blunt abdominal trauma with a visible hematuria, he should have a CT because he is highly suspicious that he has injured part of his urological system. Any penetrating injury to the abdomen, he should have a CT. Microscopic hematuria in general with a stable patient is not an indication for an imaging for the renal trauma. However, if at any point of admission the blood pressure drop less than 90 mm mercury, there is an indication with the presence of the microscopic hematuria to have the CT. Patient presenting with deceleration type or acceleration type of injury to the abdomen should have a CT because the impact to injure the kidney with this suspected injury are really high. And finally, any children coming with abdominal trauma, they should have a CT because the less of the support to the different organs will allow them to be very, very liable to have injuries to the urological organs. So management, in case of stable patient after a confirmed renal trauma, this should be managed conservatively initially, and this will include bed rest till the hematuria resolve, strict observations, and there is a conflicting data about the use of antibiotic with these patients or not. They should have a repeat CT within two to four days according to their condition. And usually if the CT show the stable appearance of the hematoma or the injury and the patient is still stable, they should be discharged at that time. And then again, they should be followed up within three months again with another CT and preferably they should have a radioisotope renal scan to assess the kidney function. And these all confirmed by the European guidelines. Angioembolization nowadays is the most common procedure that takes place with the case of renal trauma. 
although there is no definite criteria of the indication for the embolization in this case, but in general, patients with active contrast exacerbation from the parenchyma, signs of every fistula or pseudoaneurysm should have an embolization. There is also some literature that has also looked at the success rate after the repeat of embolization in the case of free bleeding, which still show a very good success rate in comparison to the exoperation, which will usually end up by nephrectomies. For the unstable patient, the process will be completely different. In most of these cases, there will be no time to assess with imaging, so they need an immediate surgical exploration. There are also other indications for the exploration in previously stable patient as the presence of the progressive decrease in the hemoglobin. However, there is no actual definition for that drop. And also, presence of expanding opacified hetoma are indication for the retroperitoneal exploration in the case of abdominal exploration in case of polytrauma. There is two issues that will usually arise in the case of exploration of these patients. The first point is that once search within a space is explored, there is a higher chance that the team will proceed for nephrectomy because usually the bleeding from the kidney will be very difficult to um, control in these cases. The second issue that the condition of the contralateral kidney will be unknown as there is no previous imaging to assess it in these cases. So this will be the aim of the uh, on-table IVU which includes a single shot of a 2 milli milligram per kg of omniopec and then single QB X-ray film after 10 minutes will be taken. And this will give you a very good idea about the contralateral kidney and also will allow you to crudely assess the amount of the trauma in the affected kidney. There is some crucial steps that every urologist need to know about the surgical indication, the surgical exploration for the renal trauma, which include an incision through the upper midline, and then this will give you a very good access to the main blood vessel and also allow repair of any other affected organ with this trauma. Small bowels will be dislocated to expose the retroperitoneum coverage of the big blood vessels. Then incision of this retroperitoneum over the aorta should take place and renal vessels should be identified just above the inferior mesenteric vessels. We usually start by controlling the artery and vein and then assessment to the kidney to check whether the parenchymal injury will be amenable for repair or the injury is very severe that it will need an nephrectomy. The European guidelines has put a really good flowchart for the cases of the renal trauma, which will sum up everything. So in a suspected renal trauma, first thing that we need to ask whether they are stable or not. If they are stable, they should, they should have been assessed for the presence of hematuria. If there is a visible hematuria, they should have a CT. If they have a non-visible hematuria and they are stable, they shouldn't have. But if this was associated with deceleration injury or they are in the pediatric age group or their blood pressure has dropped down less than 90, they should then have a CT. And then, according to the grades, usually grade one and two will be managed conservatively if they are still stable. Grade three is a good chance that it will be managed conservatively, but you could also need some angiogram and embolization after that for sure. Grade four and five, although nowadays they are amenable also for some convertible management, but they are not usually stable and they will usually need some surgical intervention.
In the case of unstable patient, the story is different. They will usually need an acceleration and you will need the on-table IVU study to check for the contralateral kidney. If it is normal, you will observe. If it is abnormal and there is a pulsatile or expanding hematoma, retroperitoneal space should be open and then either for repair of the laceration or an effectomy. Same technique go for the penetrating injury, but you should be aware that once there's a penetrating injury, the chances for the conservative management will be less. There is some complication after this renal trauma that we need to be aware of. So first of all, there is a chance for the re-bleeding or delayed bleeding, which will increase the risk to require an nephrectomy by the time. There is also a very big chance, especially in grade 4, to have a urinary extravasation and urinoma formation. That's why in grade 4 we need to early consider stent insertion. This urinoma could be complicated with an infection and abscess formation, which will need percutaneous drainage. And there is a chance by just the parenchymal trauma that we may need an angioembolization because of the formation of arterial venous fistula. On the long term, there is a possibility that the kidney function will be affected from this laceration injury. And also, there is a chance that those patients will be liable for the renal hypertension, which we call the beige kidney. To sum it up, we need to know that most of the renal trauma could be managed conservatively now. But there are some specific indications which we have covered for imaging in cases of renal trauma. Angioembolization now is playing a very central role in the management of renal trauma. Unstable patients should be explored. And in the long term, there is a possibility for renal hypertension, so it should be monitored for that. And finally, thanks for your attention, and I hope that you will find this lecture useful. Please feel free to send any question on this email and I will answer it once it is possible. I would be also very grateful if you could fill the provided feedback questionnaire in the comments below the video. Thanks all.